Number 37. Calculate the concentration of the silver ion, which is Ag+, required to begin precipitation of Ag2CO3 in a solution that is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity in the carbonate ion, which is CO3 2 minus. Okay, so we're talking about precipitation of a compound, right? So that means that it has to be a solid. Precipitation means that, you know, you're forming a solid. So we're dealing with solubility products. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP is of the silver carbonate, which is 8.1 times 10 to the negative second. Now, in order to use this number, uh, we have to be at equilibrium. And another way to say that we're at equilibrium is that if we have a saturated solution. Now, a saturated solution is basically when you're right at the, the brink of producing solids in your solution when you're forming precipitates. They gave us that key word. We're saying that we're beginning to precipitate. So we're right at the beginning. That's a saturated solution. But if we had way too much solid in our solution, we could not use this value because we would be super saturated, oversaturated, and a lot of solid in our solution. Once we know that we can use the KSP, we have to have a balance equation. So I'm going to write the KSP equation for the silver carbonate. So let's go. Ag2CO3, that's a solid. This is going to dissolve into its two ions. They told us that it was Ag+. Plus. So Ag+. Plus. And it's a charge, so that's aqueous. And they told us that the carbonate ion was CO3 2 minus, that's aqueous. Now let's just balance. I do see that I have two silvers, so I have to come over here and I say, okay, I have to have two silvers here, but now we're all balanced. Now I'm just going to put the values that they gave us, right? So they told us for the carbonate ion, we had 2.5 times 10 to the negative six molarity. So under the carbonate, I'm going to say 2.50 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. And we want to solve for the concentration of the silver. So I don't know what the concentration of the silver is. So I'm going to label it as X. Now there's two ways that you could do this problem. The first way that I will, sh I will just talk about uh, is if we do include the coefficient. So I say instead of just X, I have 2X. Now, the only reason why I don't like using the coefficients in this particular specific problems is that if we leave it, if we leave it as 2x and I do the math, right, we're always going to come down to x equals a number. But that won't be the concentration of Ag+. Plus. Since I labeled Ag+, plus as 2x, I would have to take this x value and times it by 2. And if you're pressed for time on an exam or on a quiz, you might not have time to go back and times it by two, or you might just, you know, unfortunately mistake that you have to times it by two. So you might get a couple of points off. But if we just say, you know, screw this, you know, this coefficient here, and I just label it as X, which is perfectly fine. We do the whole math. We get X equals and they match. So it will be the same concentration. That's why I like to, in these questions, just label it as X and, you know, forget about the 2X coefficient. Now, let's get the KSP equation, right? General formula is this. We've seen it time and time again. It's just equal to the products raised to the coefficients. So let's find ours. KSP equals concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of CO3 2 minus. And in this case, let's look for those coefficients. Now, I do have the 2 in front of the Ag, so I have to take the Ag concentration and square it. And then we can raise the carbonate to the first, but you don't have to. Ag plus, we're labeling as, as x. Carbonate is 2.50 times 10 to the negative sixth. And the Ksp that we found in the back of the book is 8.1 times 10 to the negative twelfth. Okay, let's plug it in. So 8.1 times 10 to the negative 12th equals x squared, right? x squared. So x squared times 2.50 to 
times 10 to the negative sixth, teenth. Divide on both sides by 2.50 times 10 to the negative 16th. We want to get rid of that number. So that will get rid of this. And let's see what we got. 8.1 times 10 to the negative 12th divided by 2.5 times 10 to the negative 16th. I get 32,400. And that equals x squared. So if I just want to get x by itself, I do have to take the square root, but I have to take the square root of both sides. And now I will just get x equals 180. Is that the truth? Did I do something wrong? So I say, wait a minute. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm looking at this number and I say, this does not look like a molarity. So... Let's see, did I make a mistake? I'm just gonna go back, let's just see. This is a good lesson. Oh, hold on. Oh, I caught my mistake. This should have been 10 to the sixth. There we go. So I'm just gonna change all that. But this is how we kind of like, we kind of know what to expect. And then when we get a number like that, once 180 or whatever it was, no, no, no. So now I'm going to do it again. 8.1 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, there we go. 3.24. 3. Oh, what's going on here? 10 to the negative 12, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, 3.24 times 10 to the negative 6 equals x squared. And then there we go again. Let's just take the square root again. And let's get the x value. There we go. That looks much better. 1.8 times 10 to the negative third molarity. And then, you know, ag plus was just the x. So since ag plus we labeled was just x, it would just be that value. 1.8 times 10 to the negative third molarity. And that is the answer. Find that concentration. Okie dokie. What'd you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much for all your support throughout this whole journey. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers and it's absolutely incredible. And it's all because of you guys. So thank you, everyone out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will be talking to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.